biggest requests we've gotten for the iPad is the ability to view and read PDFs. So we've built that now <laughs> right into iBooks. In addition to books, you can now view PDFs. And what we've done is we've put a little uh, selector right up on the top, and so you can select between books and PDFs. When you select PDFs, you get a whole new bookshelf just for PDFs. And when you select one, they, they just look gorgeous. And you can uh, navigate through them, you can flick through them, and they're just, just gorgeous on the iPad. So PDF viewing built right into iBooks, and that's what we've done to enhance it today, and that enhancement will be out uh, just a little bit later this month. So that is my update for the iPad. <laughs> Next, I'd like to talk about the App Store, something near and dear to all of us. Now, before I get into the App Store, I want to make something really clear. We support two platforms at Apple, two. The first one is HTML5. HTML5 is a fully open, uncontrolled platform that is forged and defined by widely respected standards bodies. Apple is a member of some of these standards bodies along with lots of other companies. And we fully support HTML5. A lot of the technology in it has come from Apple. And Apple's browsers are in the lead in terms of supporting the full HTML5 standard. So we are behind this 100%, and it's fully open. Anyone can write HTML5 apps and have them on the iPad, the iPhone, the iPod Touch, and of course the Mac. The second platform we support is the App Store. The App Store is a curated platform with over now 225,000 apps, and it is the most vibrant app community on the planet. There's nowhere else you can go and find 225,000 apps. And some of them are, are just terrific apps. So we, are, we have these two platforms that we support. And what I'd like to do now is talk about the App Store. Now, you've read a lot about our process of approving apps. Let me give you some of the facts behind this. It might be interesting to you. We get about 15,000 apps submitted every week. That's new apps. That's updates to apps, everything, about 15,000 a week. And they come in in up to 30 different languages that we support. 15,000 apps a week, up to 30 languages. Guess what? 95% of all the apps we get submitted are approved within seven days. 95% of them approved within seven days. Well, what about the 5% the that aren't? Why don't we approve these apps? Well, let me give you the three top reasons. There's more, but these are the three top ones. The number one reason, the app doesn't function as advertised. It doesn't do what the developer says it does. So we reject it. We say, you said it did this, it does this. Change your description or change your app, but it doesn't do what you told us it did. The second reason is use of private APIs. We're very clear on this. Developers can't use private APIs. Why not? Because when we change the OS, those private APIs are not guaranteed not to change. And if they change, the app will break. And we'll have a very unhappy customer, right? If they upgrade their OS and have their apps break, they're not going to be happy campers. So you can't use private APIs. And developers that use private APIs, of course, know exactly what they're doing. So. <laughs> and the third reason we reject apps, the third most frequent reason, they crash. So I think if you were in our shoes, you would be rejecting these apps for the same three reasons. Even with all of this, 95% of these apps are approved within seven days. So I just wanted to give you those facts. Sometimes when you read some of these articles, you, you'd think something different was going on. But 95% of these apps get approved within seven days. Now, I'd like to highlight one of them for a moment, eBay. eBay came out with a great app on the iPhone last year. And eBay's CEO, John Donahoe, made this statement last week at the D conference. We launched the eBay application on the iPhone last year, 10 million downloads, 
It did $600 million of volume its first year. It's going to do $1.5 billion to $2 billion this year. Wow. Would we all be this successful? This is fantastic. Well, it's my pleasure now to show you three new apps that are going to be on the App Store soon. They're all in the entertainment category, and I'm sure they're all aspiring to this kind of success as well. The first one is Netflix. Netflix on the iPhone, and it's my pleasure to introduce Netflix CEO, Reed Hastings. There he is. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Reed. Two months ago, we launched the Netflix application for the iPad, and it's been a tremendous success for us. It's now one of our fastest growing platforms. It's just incredible. The customer ratings in the App Store are some of the highest of any application. It's been one of the top 10 most downloaded applications in all of the App Store. And in particular, in the entertainment category, the Netflix app has been the number one most downloaded application. There is, however, one feature request we've consistently gotten. And I'm happy to announce today, Netflix application for the iPhone coming this summer for free. And for an early look at the application, my colleague, John Cincuti. Thank you, Reed. Now, starting this summer, you're going to get your full Netflix experience right on your iPhone, the same service you get in your HDTV, your laptop, and on your iPad. I'm going to show you how it's going to work. Now, you could start a film on your big screen TV and pick up right from where you left off on your iPhone whenever you like. You can resume your current movie from the top of our home screen. Now, as you can see, I also get personalized recommendations front and center. Netflix knows what I like based on my tastes and my viewing history. For example, Reed, you can see that I enjoy gritty crime movies. Now, John, we were going to try to keep it clean today. <laughs> all right, well then, maybe it would be safer to show off the fact that you can access all of Netflix's movie and television genres, your complete instant queue, or you can search through Netflix's entire streaming library for movies and television shows you'd like to watch. John, now let's try to show the search off. There's a great little documentary I saw at Sundance, Art and Copy. It's kind of a counterpoint to Mad Men. Uh, why don't you look that up? All righty. Great. Well, we've got it. A miracle. <laughs> Shocking. Well, I'm going to add it to my instant queue, and uh, I'm going to check it out tonight. Now, just like on the iPad, on the iPhone, Netflix is taking advantage of Apple's HTTP adaptive bitrate streaming technology to optimize our playback over Wi-Fi and over 3G as well. And in fact, Apple's technology allows us to seamlessly switch between networks. So you're going to get a great playback experience even when you're on the go. Thank you, John, and thank you to everyone. Netflix iPhone application this summer for free. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Good time. That's great. Next up, Zinya. Zinya is a, is a remarkable phenomenon. And uh, well, let me have them explain it to you. It's amazing. Mark Pincus, CEO of Zinya. Zinya. Thanks, Mark. There you go. Well, thank you, Steve and Apple, for having us here today. We're really honored and excited. Today, we'll be introducing farming for the iPhone. <laughs> the, uh, Farmville is our most popular game, and we're excited to be finally bringing it to the most popular mobile gaming platform in the world. Every day, 35 million people play Zynga's games. That's more than the combined audiences for the season finales of Lost 